Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Global Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we begin with a humble Mars scanner. This one probably destined for Phobos and or Deimos, we'll see. And uh, we're just gonna launch now, even though the relative inclination is imperfect, I'll fix that along the way. So, ignition. And launch. Bit of a recoil there on the pad. So we'll launch this, we'll launch, launch that uh, satellite constellation I cooked up, which you might have seen in the Realism Overhaul Sandbox video. And uh, then I want to launch something that will land on Phobos and Deimos. And then possibly some extra fuel would be good. Just send a tug with some, some fuel arc it in orbit. And I think that would be a good start. Then we can work on... There's really only one major mid-course adjustment, and that's the Mars Transfer Vehicle. We might have to relocate that, given experience with some of the other missions. That location might not be the best place to do that correction. Okay, separation and ignition. Nozzle extension. And I forgot to put the RCS thrusters on this stage again. Oh well. Okay, fairing separation. This mission is identical to the one that we launched before. Hopefully it will be okay. Got antennae. And again, hopefully those have sufficient range, we'll find out. I added transfer window planner. Probably a good idea. And if we take a look at the... Well, we probably can't take a look at the next Mars. Well, maybe we can. Earth to Mars. We'll say no insertion burn. So that's this one. And then let's advance the years up by one. That's the next one. So we'll add an alarm for that. And that'll occur while... The Mars Transfer Vehicle is still out there, so we'll be building another Mars Transfer Vehicle. Time. But we have plenty of time for that. They'll all, all the other missions will at least arrive at Mars before we need to construct the next one. Okay, and shut down. That'll be a good enough orbit for transfer. And let's uh, go ahead and select Mars and see how the transfer looks should be pretty good. We've got 4,153 meters per second So that's more than enough One reason I made the commsat pack is it sure cuts down on the parts involved You know here we've got batteries. Well, I mean uh, Those are especially necessary for the survey scanner, I suppose, but for the tank two antennae Four solar panels, and then uh, two sets of RCS thrusters, plus an engine in the back. Now, the engine in the back isn't part of one of the commsats I designed, but all the other parts are just one part. Reduces clutter in the persistent file. Well, we don't have communication right now. Well, now we do. All right. We'll try for the burn anyway. Seems like this has happened before. Getting into orbit around Phobos with the amount of Delta V we have. Maybe I should send a more robust satellite for that for this purpose. I don't think we have enough fuel packed in here to be honest. Three thousand six hundred meters per second. I mean sounds like a lot. Okay. And what happened? And we'll need a correction. Let's just uh, dump the stage. By all rights, it should run out of fuel anyway by the time we get to any correction. Oh, we lost uh, the impulse from the separation was too much. Okay, so we'll correct that inclination issue on the mid-course adjustment. And then let's see if uh, we 
I again, I think I've underestimated how much we need for Phobos. But we'll see. Okay, so that's interesting. A 4.4 degree relative inclination to Phobos, and we can try and add a maneuver to capture here and see what happens. Okay, so that brings us to a level tension to Phobos, and that costs 3085. If we go over here, and I'm not correcting inclination right now, and lift it up again, and just to get an estimate how much it would take to get into orbit around Phobos. Try and match Phobos' orbit. Like that. Oh, it's tight. I mean, so we're talking about 3,106 over there and then 539. We don't quite have it. Um, and then we have to fil uh, factor in the mid course adjustment. But, you know, maybe if we lean a little bit closer in like that, we'll see. But yeah, let me launch another one of these with a little bit more fuel. And uh, hopefully that'll work out a little bit better. Also, I'd like a version that has panels that actually turn. Now, not a huge deal because this has a reaction wheel. But I don't know why these stock panels no longer seem to turn. Definitely used to. Okay, anyway, let's add that alarm. And uh, I'll break it up. I'm not going to do one of these immediately. Let me do the ComSat pack. Okay, so here we go for the ComSat pack deployment. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. You might not have seen my uh, Realism Overhaul Sandbox video on this particular system. Well, you'll uh, see how it works anyway. Though we won't actually be deploying the satellites until we get there. They're arrayed in a ring right here. And then we've got a heat shield at the bottom. The only question is whether the transfer stage is properly shielded or not. That's an open question at the moment. I think it has as much shielding as one of the inflatable heat shields, so... A bit weak. It doesn't have a blater, of course. Okay, separation and ignition. Nozzle extension. Most of the transfer is going to be done by the transfer stage. I do notice we do have boil off, even though it's got full uh, full MLI layers on it. So we'll watch out for that. Liquid hydrogen, of course. Bill use most of the hydrogen and oxygen on the transfer and won't be carrying it all the way to Mars. Uh, carrying a little bit over it to Mars might be helpful, or for a mid course adjustment. We'll see. Okay, and shut down 241 by 178, and that should be good enough. Let's target Mars, and let's extend the panels. Of course, they're not going to get any light in this direction, but oh well. That is correct. We have no electric charge coming in. Okay, node is in 14 minutes. Hopefully we'll have communication at that point. Lost communication right here. Now we have communication. It's going to take the BE-7 a little while to do its part of the burn. We get almost halfway through though. And we lost comms again. We need more commsats right around here. Hmm. But it didn't cause any problems for the previous transfer, so I'll just take it as it is. But where are our commsats? I mean, we've got a bunch around the moon, and of course, uh, well, they seem to be all powered right now, so that's good. And um, what about... Well, that's just a xenon refueler, so we really don't have anything around Earth right now. I think actually the... Mars mission, the Mars transfer vehicle, had been facilitating communications while it was in orbit around Mar uh, around Earth. Now that it's departed, it's no longer doing that. 
But anyway, uh, we should still be all right. Okay. Well, we'll do what we can and then make a correction. Okay, some sort of close approach is happening. Oh, we lost it. We lost it. Okay. Let's replot, and then I'll have to reverse the numbers on the plot to get the right direction. I saw a comment on the Realism Overall Sandbox video about a potential way to reverse the controller on here without just flipping the model. I could just flip the model in uh, in Unity, and that'll do it. But, uh, we'll see. Now, how much Delta V do we actually have left? Uh, Mechjeb is telling a lie there. We've got 1,062, so it should still be enough. It is a pack comsat, so we don't, strictly speaking, need it to be like equatorial. In fact, that would not be a good thing. We'll go like this for now and then correct later. So that'll take about half of our remaining delta V. Now I want to actually reverse everything. Yet, who gave me that idea? Uh, in a different context, though. So, when we capture around Mars, of course we've got this heat shield, but my expectation is to leave the, the petals out, if you will, these panels out, to assist with creating more drag for the capture. We could tuck them in. Technically, we were only 5 tons, and this heat shield pro should probably do the trick. But if we tuck them in, the thrusters aren't going to work, right? So I'll have to ponder the particular strategy of this. Okay, guess what? Another correction. Settled? We are settled. But we'll have to keep an eye on what's going on. Okay, not that way. Not that way. Okay, I think it's too finicky at this point, so we'll just have to wait till we get there and... Hope we have the amount to bring it in, which is a lot actually. Maybe we'll do it at a mid-course adjustment and hopefully the MLI layers are good enough to give us some delta V when we get to that point. Trying to get it done here, but it's too touchy. Okay, well let's just put that in for starters and then we'll figure it out. We can't really dial in the... Uh, it's probably up. Uh, no, probably down. Yeah, let's see. Okay, good. Electric charge is coming in. That's probably thrown us off completely. Not that bad, I suppose. Alright, that off SAS on. Persistent rotation. And... Should be good. It's recharging. And these are huge solar panels. All right. Well, I'll leave the RCS on just for show, or maybe maybe persistent rotation needs it. I forget. But okay, so on to another Mars scanner, hopefully with more fuel, so that we can guarantee it gets around Phobos and Deimos. Okay, so we're gonna send another scanner over, and in order to get more Delta V, so that I can rendezvous and get into orbit around Phobos. I needed to put boosters on this single stick Sagita. I decided not to try and launch it on heavy. We'll see if this is sufficient. So throttle is up, SAS is on, and ignition. And the thrust weight ratio is pretty high. More than two. So let's get this thing moving. The amount it's actually trying to send to Mars, by the way, is 4 tons. I, I think I deliberately went with exactly 4 tons, you can see there, for the payload. We want to hang on to the boosters for a little bit longer so that they don't explode as soon as we let go of them, after all. So thralling down during max Q seems like a good idea. Okay, separation. 
Off they go. Oh, well, they're sort of all over the place. Those um, Separatrons are a little bit too vigorous. But they seem to be in one piece at least, so there's that. Okay, separation and ignition, nozzle extension. Okay, that's all nominal. Let me dump the fairings. Alright. 1,500. Looks like we're good as far as transferring on this stage is concerned. Now, in order to get more delta V on this, I needed to upsize the engine. That 2 kN thruster was not going to work. And I didn't want to put a whole bunch of 2 kN thrusters. So I went with an AJ10-190 instead. It works, you know. And I changed the RCS thrusters. Hmm. That 280 worries me. Because it should be more than that for Aerozine. We'll see. We do have a reaction wheel, but uh, I'm a little bit worried that I've got the wrong configuration for the RCS. Hmm. Okay, and shut down 208 by 170. And we've got 3,894 meters per second left in the stage, so that should be enough for the transfer. We've got 4,500 in the probe itself, so I believe, given what we saw with the previous pro, uh, the previous scanner, that uh, that should be enough. Okay, well, it's a communication thing again, of course. Let's get these. That's twitching a whole lot. Well, I guess we'll find out about the RCS thrusters when we get to them. Possible I just didn't um, up the tech level. Okay, node RCS. Sell that fuel down. Hey, Mars is right there. Convenient. Oop, uh, did it go too far? No, we've got an encounter. Okay, we should be able to finish off the stage doing a correction right here. That'll be most convenient. Probably ought to wait a little bit longer for an inclination burn, but we'll see. If the stage can do it, then that's fine. And we really want to be in line with Phobos. Now if it turns out that Phobos is already accomplished by the previous one, we'll send this one over to Deimos, of course. Okay, well this is going to be a rather quick burn. And then a lot of RCS. And it's lying to me during physical time warp. Maybe I should just allow the decoupling from the upper stage to push us closer. Yeah, alright. Probably gonna have to do a correction later anyway. Okay, we're in vaguely the right direction, throttle us down, and separation. Well, the RCS seems to work, it's just not as efficient as I'd like it to be. No? And where did we end up after decoupling? Uh, not that much closer, actually. Ooh, that's overshooting a bit. Okay, well, the engine works. That's nice. But we need a mid-course adjustment here. 4,500 meters per second as advertised. I think I'll just do one last launch for this window. We need a lot of data anyway. Like, especially capture data, right? Because... There are a lot of variables when it comes to capturing into orbit around Mars using arrow braking. And then there's other information that I'd like to. Okay, so that'll be our correction. So one more launch, and it's gonna be a more speculative thing. I mean, this is, you know, a scanner probe is potentially, you know, normal, right? Hopefully things are not going to go too badly with it, especially with the Delta V boost. The next one probably isn't going to work. 
Okay, I did say that this was unlikely to be successful, but I didn't think I would experience problems immediately. And well, it's shaking a little bit. I have done some surreptitious clipping, I have to admit. Uh, so maybe that's what's going on. I didn't realize that uh, certain parts didn't like it so much, but we'll try and launch anyway. We're close enough to the right relative inclination. I don't feel like trying to time warp a day would be in the best interest of this rocket right now. So, ignition. At least it's only 0.4 meters per second wiggle. And launch. Well, it's sort of kicked off in one direction here. Oh, I've got SAS. <laughs> well, that would probably be a bad thing. Um, uh, we've got a fairing separation issue here. Ah, uh, you know what, I bet, uh, the payload is partly clipping into the fairing and that's what's causing it to wiggle. Um, that's just, uh, bad placement on my part. Once we get the fairings off, that should be fine. Uh, assuming they did don't explode something when they separate, of course. So what is this? Well, this is a lander for Phobos, but it is sort of a test of a combination crew lander and ISRU unit. Now, for Mars that would be impossible because it just takes too much Delta V to take off from Mars again. And uh, we wouldn't want to carry the ISR unit. We could, you know, jettison it. That's an option. And I will, I will think more on that. If we eventually develop an overall heavier system than, you know, fitting stuff on the Sagita rockets, then that will be more likely to be possible. But for now, doing a crew capsule that lands on Phobo Phobos that uh, has the ISR unit is possible, but narrowly. And that's what we have here. Now, of course, I didn't put crew in because it is a test. And uh, we will see the lander stage is actually a Blue Origin Blue Moon rather than my own lander stage, and that's because it's lighter, because of course the engine is more efficient than methane and oxygen. So, yeah, a little bit of a better chance at getting it done. But of course, if there's substantial boil-off, that's not gonna work. The lander portion only has about 1,300 meters per second, so... Yeah, now we, we've seen that if we capture just right around Mars, then that will be enough to get into orbit around Phobos. Uh, it's still going to be close. Okay, ignition of the core, separation of the boosters. Not the smoothest transition I've ever done. I'll hold on to the fairings until we get to space. I think that's probably prudent. Hopefully it's just the fairings, because we planned on dumping that. If it's something else on the vehicle, that's not as good. Okay, fairing set. Okay, well, they're off cleanly. Uh, well, maybe the shuttering is just the thrust, I don't know. But here's what it looks like. The Lynx spacecraft, you know, the cabin itself, not the shell that we put the orbital version in. Of course, the docking port and uh, radiators right on top there. We've only got two solar panels, so I don't know how well that's going to power the ISR unit. The ISR unit is actually here. That's the surreptitious clipping I was mainly worried about. You can see why. It clips into the blue moon down there. Um, the blue moon here, and then uh, we've got commutrons on the side, we've got the drills at the bottom, and um, batteries, and these tanks are extra food, water, and oxygen for the crew. And lithium hydroxide and nitrogen for the pressurization, of course. Um, two, it's really meant for two crew to land on Phobos or Deimos, and in that case, they would have about 240 days of supplies, so quite a lot. But they won't be very comfortable with, uh, as far as Kerbalism is concerned, I don't think. So they probably wouldn't actually stay there for so long. But anyway, they could. Uh, with the supplies, at least. 
And the question is, how long does it take to actually refuel this on Phobos or Deimos, right? Does Phobos or Deimos even have ore? Because that's what we would be drilling for to convert into water and um, hydrogen and oxygen. We will see. And of course we have an inflatable heat shield here. That's another question mark. Of course we have to capture around Mars at exactly the right altitude in order to have our apoapsis hit Phobos's orbit but not go too far past or too be far below. Otherwise we'll have to expend more fuel from the blue moon in order to correct that. Okay, separation ignition. Nozzle extension. Felt V-wise with this stage, we are fine. We could probably boost it a little bit more with the Sagita Super Heavy than we did here. The payload mass right now is uh, basically 15 tons, so that's a good reference. So we can do more than 15 tons with the Sagita Super Heavy to Mars. And shut down. 199 by 171 and we've got 4,400 meters per second. But as I said, this lander portion only has actually 1,200 it looks like. And we don't know how much boil off is going to affect it. But we will see. It's got full... Um, MLI layers, 100 layers of MLI, so that's insulated as it's going to get. And the calm dishes. Hopefully these commutrons are good enough. I should probably have flipped them the other way around. They're facing the solar panels, that's not the best thing. And we'll probably have a communication blackout just in time for a node as usual. That's been the pattern. That's because there's no ground station there. And I guess the moon is... is on the opposite side or something. Yeah, our node is here. The moon is over there. So we can't use the loon sats and that's what's going on. I mean, in a way, I guess we won't see how Boiloff does on the liquid hydrogen and oxygen because it doesn't happen unless we focus on the vessel and we're probably going to be focused on the Mars transfer vehicle so maybe not the best test ever though interestingly enough it looks like the liquid hydrogen isn't boiling off right now otherwise it's say 0.00 like the nitrogen does which is another interesting point the nitrogen is going to deplete on the way there now Good thing I packed extra instead of just what we needed while the Kerbals were in, but, uh... Yep, uh, this cabin is still... Maybe we should just stop pressure control, but then when we reactivate it, it might sap all the nitrogen. I've had bad experiences with the pressure control system and nitrogen, so I'll just leave it running. Probably for the best. Ooh, I forgot shielding. That's not good. Yeah, that might be a problem. I don't know how bad this shielding situation on the surface of Phobos is, but ought to be worse than the surface of Mars, so... Probably warrants some shielding, alright. Okay, well, at least we've got something. Alright, now I'll plot a... Oh, we had something. I'll plot a correction burn. Okay, correction burn ignition. Oh, that's a bit low. Uh, I guess I was a little bit early. Alright, well, make course adjustment then. Um, we'll keep this stage with it. It should still have some delta V left when it comes time for the make course adjustment. Okay, uh, that'll do for now. And let's have it not keep using those thrusters and I'm gonna add that alarm so 10 missions 10 missions is a good number okay well it's not recharging optimally here
And so there'll be a general pattern here. We launch missions, because everything has to happen at the right time, right? We launch missions, we bring back missions, missions arrive. Uh, basically, when we're trying to bring back stuff, there aren't gonna be too many things that I want to bring back, but you know, the Mars transfer ship and all that. We'll probably be handling the mid-course adjustments just before we do the return part. Maybe some of the arrivals will happen when we're trying to do a return part. Mm, that would be ideal, but I doubt it. I think the return returns happen before the arrivals. So basically launches, mid-course adjustments, return trips, uh, return burns, arrivals, and then uh, Earth uh, returns and then launching stuff into Earth orbit to assemble for a new Mars transfer vehicle. And then the cycle continues. So basically those six steps repeatedly. And that's the idea. So we are recharging now. I'm gonna set persistent rotation to sun. And we can just hold it there. As long as it does persistently rotate, that should be fine, but we'll see what kind of warnings I get. So, there we go. This little guy will attempt to land on Phobos, but we'll see if that works out. It's overdoing it, obviously. I mean, we could have made a tiny little probe to land on Phobos, but what's the point, really? We are trying to do crude things and build bases and all that business, so we might as well send something a little bit more substantial that's going to be more functional when it comes time to send Kerbals. So with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.